go it went off when I unplugged it is it plugged in does it power off of the control we're on are you sure we're on hey Facebook I'm told we're on a little technical difficulty with the microphones there sorry about that it happens on live TV or we, we I wish we could say we planned this chaos out, but we don't. We're just good at it. Uh, Kent Martz here with Explore Scientific. Uh, we're going to be talking about some cool stuff today, savings on cool stuff. Um, this is the Explore Scientific clock with Bluetooth speaker and wireless charging. So it's a really cool device. You charge it up, and then you can use it to charge other devices like my smartphone here. My smartphone has a case on it, and I can just put it on top and slide it over, and when I reach the right spot, my phone lights up. So, let's do this one more time, maybe tip it here, and we're gonna slide it, and you're gonna see that, there we go, and I'm now connected to it. So, it is charging my smartphone through the inductive charger. This has a 4,400 milliamp hour battery, it is good for uh, playing up to six hours of music per charge. What do you mean, playing six hours of music per charge? It's not a radio, but here's the cool thing. I can fire up my smart device, and here we go. And there we go. We're playing music through this fantastic clock radio. I'm just gonna let it play in the background while I talk. That's sort of nice. So anyway, music's playing while we're talking. This has a uh, dual alarm with snooze. It's got a LED uh, time display up here with adjustable brightness. As you can see, it's got a nice uh, subdued color through the fabric, fabric front. Here on the back, it's got an on off switch. It's got the auxiliary cable in so you can play an auxiliary device here. It has the DC plug-in to charge the device through a wall socket, and it has a USB port right here. So if you want to charge the device with a USB cable, you can do that as well. So this is the Explore Scientific clock with Bluetooth speaker and wireless charger. It has a 4,400 milliamp hour battery. You can get up to six hours of music with full charge. You can charge your smartphone devices. It'll charge some with the cases on. It'll charge others without the case on, so you have to take it out of the case. But my phone with this uh, case, we just slide it in there and I get a nice there vibration. And now my phone is charging right there. So uh, I have stopped the music because, oh, no, I haven't. There we go. Oh, it cycled through. That's why it started over. So this is the uh, Four Scientific LED smartphone charger clock with a Bluetooth capabilities. We can play music from our phones with this. Going to switch to another cool item. We're going to look at the Explore Scientific 125 uh, challenge set. This is for eight and up. Comes with uh, uh, 125 different uh, circuitry challenges showing you how to wire them up. Right here, you can play games. Uh, this is really cool. Uh, all sorts of things. A dinosaur, <coughs> excuse me, a dinosaur game, a bubble making machine, a basketball uh, shooting game, a maze, a spinning helicopter, that launcher, all sorts of stuff. It comes with all of this stuff right here in bags. Well, a couple weeks ago, we used this to make a really cool the basketball game. That was pretty cool to put together. It has different bases for circuit boards that you can build the circuits on. It has four of them. You can put them together make really big things or use them individually for smaller things. This is a fantastic piece right here. What it does is it teaches you the principles of electric wiring. So uh, it teaches you the, uh, the flow of circuitry, uh, the flow of current from the red wires through this device into the, blue, the black wire. Uh, it te talks about grounding neutral. There's all sorts of things that you can learn uh, from this uh, 125 piece challenge set. 
uh, fun to play with. Tyler and I have uh, messed with it before. It runs off of seven AA batteries, potentially that many batteries. If you put all the things together, those batteries are not included. This is good for kids eight and up. It's just just a fantastic assembly. When I saw this, when they were looking at it last year, I'm like, oh, I would have loved to have had that when I was a kid. And that's how I sort of gauge this stuff is if I would have loved to have had it, I know there's geek kids like me who would love to have it as well. Hey, what you got over there in the control booth besides lunch? Hello, Billy Zastro. Thanks for logging in and watching today. We appreciate that. Hello, Tariq. Tariq's in the UAE. He's uh, up late this evening. Uh, what else you got? Hey, David, nice to see you. Or not see you, but you know what I mean. Ah, Dave Ng. Very good. Nice to have everybody with us. Hey, I'm telling you right now, that challenge set is, is, is awesome because it teaches you a lot of basic stuff. But if you really want to go up the ladder, if you will, on um, uh, wiring and circuitry, you're going to get the Explore Scientific 50 uh, experiment set. This looks like less, but this is significantly more. It costs less money than the one I just showed you a minute ago. But this thing, I'm going to try and remember them all. Again, it's for ages eight and up. But this thing is fantastic, okay? The previous one was circuit boards you wired. This comes with a pre-configured circuit board with spring-loaded terminals so you can plug the wires in just by bending the terminal over, sticking the wire in, and you can take care of building your circuits. But let me tell you what all this does. This really gets into high-level circuitry, all right? This gets into uh, targeting different concepts in electronics, right? It comes with the pre-assembled circuit boards and details for more than 50 different things that you can do with this circuit board right here. Um, it involves light, sound, magnets, touch plates, uh, basic terminology and concepts about electricity, key principles of electricity, uh, begins to teach high level circuitry, including tutorials on circuitry concepts and circuitry symbols and explanations. Projects include, now this is just a short list right here I'm reading off of you, a simple LED circuit, a spinning LED, uh, the function of reed switches. Well, what's a reed switch? Well, if you've ever seen like a window burglar alarm or these commercials where you can install your own burglar alarms and you put one on the, on the window frame and one on the window face and so if the window opens, uh, it breaks the circuit, that's a reed switch, okay? So it teaches the principles of reed switches it really gets into high, some high-level high, high level stuff. Demonstrations of resistance and current. Resistance is the opposition to the flow of current. current. So just like, uh, think of it as friction almost. So water going through a garden hose, if the garden hose is long enough, the friction will stop the water from flowing eventually, right? So electricity through wire, if the resistance is high enough, it will reduce and eventually stop the flow of electricity. Uh, current is the stream of charged particles that's moving through a conductor. So current is like water going through the garden hose. That's current and resistance is effectively the friction that's opposing the flow of that water or the current as well. It talks about resistors in series, right? Uh, so series connection of parallel resistors limit the flow of, of, of a charge and they can be wired in different ways to achieve different results. Uh, simple demonstration of PNP and NPN transistors. Uh, that uh, terminology reflects the control of the direction of current flow. Uh, light triggered and dark triggered LEDs. Uh, digital display of numbers, letters, dogs barking with flashing LED. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And what I like about this is it also includes, let me find the page. So for those of you who wonder what all those symbols are, when you see a, a wiring, a diagram or a circuit diagram, you get that right there on this page right here that shows you what all of those symbols mean and a great definition 
It also gets into all sorts of the circuitry here. Fantastic piece, uh, really affordable, a fantastic item uh, for a kid or a maturing adult who likes uh, electronics or has an interest in mechanics and electronics and how circuitry works. It uh, was a fantastic design, uh, runs off of two AA batteries. Uh, it really is a fun piece. I've been playing with this a little bit. I like the heck out of both of these uh, challenge sets, uh, the 50 and the 125 experiment. And this is a hodgepodge right here of stuff. I threw in the five megapixel uh, game camera. You can use this to, uh, as security cameras, you can use a tail, trail camera to see what's going on in the woods, uh, in your backyard. At night, we all wonder what's going on in our backyard. Well, this device will tell you. It runs off of, it's waterproof, and runs off of, oh, the battery case is gone. It runs off of eight AA batteries. You provide a micro SD card that plugs in there, and this thing is dead simple to use. You simply put the batteries in, put the micro SD card in, and then simply turn it on. That's all there is to it. You close it up. The LED screen right here is gonna give you time to position it and get it set up so it's the place you want it to be, and uh, off you go. It'll start taking pictures. The flash is good up to like 30 feet. I'm sitting here. Make sure I get it right. What well, you got better? Just walk on in here, Tyler, and say, hey. You're gonna get close to your mic. Hey, everybody. They can't see us, though. That's his, that's his arm that's right his there. Arm. That's Tyler's big, hairy hey, arm right kid. there. I'm good. Tyler go. brought battery me the pack. battery pack. Right there. There's the battery pack that goes in. The Bresser 5 megapixel trail camera. Uh, flash range is up to 20 yards. Uh, has a passive infrared flash, so you're not going to see it at night. It has a little red light that allows you to help aim it as well. Uh, you have to supply the micro SD card yourself. It will not run on anything higher than a 32 gig card. Uh, it comes with a mounting strap and a USB cable so that you can uh, leave it mounted, open it up, plug in the USB port and uh, see what's going on with it. You can change the card out, take it home. Uh, you can, hang on a second, you can, Oh, footage, we got footage? Awesome. Okay, so here's some pictures that this gamer camera actually took, well, not this game camera, but the one Rick White has, who's on our Alpen uh, Bresser Pro staff. Uh, it takes pictures, it does not take uh, Deer movies. Deer and turkey. Uh, one of these we have, we'll have to dig it up. Uh, there's a bear looking at it, walking up, a bear looking at it closer. And then you get a nice inside shot of a bear's tongue and mouth yeah. because because the you have that? I think in it. Yeah, so we're gonna get the bear shot up. The, he didn't eat it, he didn't swallow it, he didn't destroy it, but it survived the bear close encounter of the uh, third kind. So all sorts of, I think we got a fox coming up. So this thing takes great pictures. It does not have a time date stamp on it. That's why this is so affordable. Uh, we have a version that's got time date stamp on it. This is the, the one that doesn't. And when I talk affordable, we're talking, uh, you can pick these up for an astoundingly low price for a game camera. It's dead simple to use. You put the batteries into it, right? You put the batteries in, making sure it's oriented correctly. Got a little silver thing that lines up with the silver thing. You put the batteries in. You do this before you got out in the woods, of course. You get the batteries in there. You turn it on, on off switch. That's it. That's all you've got to do. And this thing is now ready to go. You push it down, make sure it's seated, lock it with the clasp. Bam, the camera's on and it's ready to go. So this is the Bresser 5 pixel megapixel trail camera, sir. Okay, there's the bear. I think you're seeing it now. There it is right there. I can barely see it across the studio. Was that it? That's the, that's the bear before he bit, I think. Yeah, and I think we have a picture. I, I remember seeing a picture of the mouth. It was it was really dark, if I remember correctly. So there's the bear. Well, 
And there's the mouth. Here's the cool part, though. There's the game camera after being chewed on by Le Bruin, the bear. There we go. And, it's still... and it still works. Got chewed on by a bear. Had it been swallowed by the bear, I suspect the bear may not work anymore. But the camera may have worked until the batteries ran out, depending on how chewy, uh, how much chewing the bear wanted to do. So that's the lineup for today. The uh, Bluetooth. Uh, what you got? He says, do you have tools for solar imaging and visual, but not acrobatic scope to be used? Something like a solar filter or a dedicated okay. solar scope? Okay, Tariq, we do not have a dedicated solar scope. We sell uh, filters, uh, a, a filter material um, that goes on the front of the telescope in front of the front objective lens. Uh, comes in a, a cardboard frame. It can be sized to fit effectively any telescope out there. Uh, we, yeah, but I was going to say that, but this, this is designed, it's solar safe film to go in front of the objective part of the telescope, the front of the telescope that squeezes in onto the dew shield. It comes with foam pieces you cut to fit your telescope and uh, you want to always make sure it's on there. If you do not ever buy a solar filter that screws into the eyepiece, those are extremely dangerous because they're so close to the focal point that imagine a microscope or a, mic, uh, a magnifying glass uh, is able to set a leaf on fire. So this is so close to the focal point that it starts building up heat and will eventually crack. So you never want to use one that you screw into an eyepiece. You always want to use one that goes on the front end, the, 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 the sky end of the telescope. And we do sell those and they are actually very affordable uh, and that we, we make them up to, uh, the film is 12 inches wide so we can make them up to an 11 and 11 and a half inch aperture. I have sold them to people with uh, much larger telescopes and they go, well, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting down so much light that, that I want to use the full aperture of my 16 inch telescope. And my response is, why? You're looking at the sun, the filter's cutting out all the light anyway. It doesn't matter how big you have your netty focal length, but it just uh, is cutting down the amount of light going to the sensor or to your eye, which is the whole goal anyway. So. Oh, we appreciate that very much. Thank you, Meow Me. So are you on a microphone over there? No, my okay. Broke. okay, his microphone broke. So Meow Me said a bunch of thumbs up uh, that it looks good. So I'm going to, uh, don't know. Village Edwards says I'm planning to buy the Quartz Scientific 130 600 EQC refresh flex short telescope. Yes. And it would be my first telescope. And that's an awesome telescope combination. Uh, we have a version of that on our IXOS 100 mount. Oh yeah. So wh who was it? Elish Edward. Elish Edward says he's getting ready to buy a, a first light Newtonian 130 millimeter uh, diameter, 600 millimeter focal length uh, telescope on an EQ3 and an equatorial mount, which means you have to line it up with the uh, North Pole uh, or the South Celestial Pole if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, so you can get the full benefit of it, making nice smooth transition as it follows things across the sky. We also have that telescope uh, package with the IEXOS 100 GoTo tracker that gives you tracking and GoTo ability as well. So uh, more expensive, but you get a, a much more, you get GoTo ability and things like that. What else we got, Paul? Uh, that's it. That's it. Okay, so no more comments. We're going to wrap up the show. We try and keep them short and sweet. Keep showing all our products every day about 1.30 if we're on time. If not, might be 1.35 or 40. Uh, some days something's going on and we don't get to it, but we try hard to get, uh, gonna keep doing these uh, broadcasts every day. Just giving people exposure to uh, lots of the products uh, that are in the family of Explore Scientific. So appreciate you watching. Thanks everybody for your comments. Uh, tell your friends about us, share our streams on your social media, social media platforms and uh, it spreads the word. So I'm out of here. It's Friday. I'll see everybody Monday. Can't for Explore Scientific. As Scott says, and Jack Horkheimer always said, keep looking up. And I'll say, always be curious.